Okay, this is a quick video just to point out a few things and try and help people who are struggling to get the kind of flexibility they need out of Photos Raw Development. So one of the most common issues that people find is that they can't recover highlight detail very well in their images. Now in this particular image, I've deliberately overexposed by about half a stop and my highlights upon loading the raw image appear to be blown out. Now, although I can get some decent highlight recovery just by going to shadows and highlights and pulling the highlights back like so, that's a pretty good result overall, but we can take this a step further and this is really useful if you have very high contrast scenes. So up on here we have the assistant options and we have a number of options that we can toggle, but one of these is apply tone curve. Now photo applies a tone curve by default, otherwise the image you'd see upon loading the RAW would look a bit like this, which is less saturated, a bit more grey, and the highlights at this point still look incredibly blown out. However, because we've now taken the tone curve off, if we then bring the highlights slider all the way down, we'll find it's much more effective. So we've now taken the tone curve off and I doubt very much that we want to continue with the image looking like this. So there are a couple of things we can do to equalize this histogram a bit. One of them is to raise the midtones, otherwise known as the brightness. But of course, as you can see from the histogram, we then risk clipping that important highlight detail that we just tried to recover. The other step is to add in our own custom tone curve. So across on the tones panel, if we enable the curves adjustment, I can create a node here just to deepen the black tones. And then around the first quarter, I can create a node and start bringing it up like so. Okay, so we've now added in effectively our own custom tone curve. And as you can see, we've increased the overall tonal level of the foreground whilst maintaining that lovely sky detail here. Now another common issue that people tend to have is that their images look a bit soft and this is simply because Photo does not do any additional sharpening. So if we have a closer look at this image we'll see it looks rather soft. And that is essentially the sharpness of your RAW file without any additional sharpening. So some people may prefer to add additional sharpening later on in their workflow, but if you want to do it in the develop persona, you can go to the details panel, enable detail refinement. And for fine detail sharpening, you want to keep a small radius, perhaps no larger than 10% and increase the amount. And there we go. Suddenly this is looking acceptably sharper. If you find this still isn't enough, just gradually raise the radius slider, like so. Now then, the other big issue is noise. So you'll notice noise reduction is actually automatically checked here, and the color slider is set to 40%. So that is the most crucial kind of noise reduction because chrominance noise, and it's present on all raw files by default, is ugly. Nobody wants it particularly. So photo will automatically analyze the image, as we can see on the assistant dialog here, and it will add a degree of color noise reduction. Now, usually this is sufficient enough, but if you're not a fan of the luminance noise either, and if I zoom in to a great zoom factor here, we can see the blocky luminance noise. We can also, if I just come out a bit, tweak the luminance slider to gradually remove that. Now to counteract the kind of smooth, almost plasticine look that you get as a result of effectively moving the fine texture and detail from the image, you can add back in noise. Now it sounds a little crazy, but effectively we're dithering the image. If you check noise addition and just use perhaps no more than 10% for the majority of decently exposed images. Let's just zoom to 100%. You'll see we've added a nice fine layer of grain over the image. 
Now again, perhaps even 8% is a little too much, so I'll take that down to about 5. But what this allows us to do is effectively add back in our own nice, textured, uniform noise, rather than the blockier noise that was originally present in the image. So once we're done there, we can just go ahead and click Develop. So then, to recap, we've taken off the default tone curve and applied our own, and in the process we've also brought the highlights back even further to give us that lovely detail and texture that we want from the sky. We've then also added some fine detail sharpening to the image, just to bring it out and make it pop a bit and counteract the inherent softness of the lens, as it may be. And then we've also completely removed the luminance and chrominance noise, and to counteract the very flat and smoothed look, we've added in our very own fine layer of noise, which is much more aesthetically pleasing. So there we go really, just a few tips to help you improve your raw development quality. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.